Here we are in the middle of a brief wintry interlude just in time for the end of meteorological winter. Good evening everyone, I'm Eric Wilhelm and on this February 28th, not quite the last day of February this time around, uh, the cold air is, the cold air I should say is definitely here and it came with a bang. Uh, this morning we uh, had winds peaking right around midday today at 44 miles per hour at the airport, but of course it's been windy pretty much all day. Just that peak gust at the airport occurred as the front pushed in this afternoon and this was a noisy transition from the unseasonable warmth to much more typical february cold especially off to our south lots of reports of wind damage last night and especially this morning down towards interstate 70 closer to the wheeling area um, storm storm uh, survey teams from the national weather service will continue kind of investigating some of this damage tomorrow on Thursday just off to our south but survey teams already have completed a lot of their work out in central Ohio and it turns out there were a handful of tornadoes early this morning uh, just imagine how rare it is to have a tornado at any time of the day let alone about five o'clock in the morning let alone in February and let alone an EF2 we had a couple of EF2 tornadoes uh, down towards the I-70 corridor from Dayton over towards Columbus and you know this list may continue to grow as they continue kind of surveying the damage down there. EF2 is getting up to the, you know, in the enhanced Fujita scale, that's, you know, the level of tornado that can do some really, really serious damage. Thankfully, we did not have any fatalities, but uh, EF2 tornadoes have winds of 111 to 135 miles per hour, and that's enough to cause cars to flip over, and a lot of light poles can be knocked down as a result, and even some roofs can be stripped off of the houses uh, when you have winds that strong. So. These were serious storms last night, and especially, again, early this morning, down across the I-70 corridor. We missed out on the severe weather in our viewing area, as kind of expected. You know, we kept our guard up last night, but we told you, you know, our, our messaging was that the uh, severe weather risk was quite a bit higher to our west and to our south, and I didn't talk about Chicago uh, in those graphics I just showed you, but yeah, some confirmed tornadoes, of course, around the Chicago area last night as well. But now the cold air is here and this radar animation looks a lot more like winter, doesn't it? We have a lot of blue on the map this evening. We have a scattering of flurries and snow showers and you know this isn't going to be a big event by any stretch of the imagination but someone's going to see some slick surfaces by late tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll talk about that in a little more detail in just a second but wow we don't see these kind of eye-popping numbers very often on the 24-hour temperature change map not only on the cold side but on the warmer side as well look at billings montana it's 32 degrees warmer than this same time yesterday while we are 34 degrees cooler than this same time last evening 42 is the number in st louis and of course dallas where it was 94 degrees a couple of days ago um, 30 degrees colder than this time yesterday. Now, the lake effect tonight, uh, this is gonna be a pretty brief window in which there can be some decent lake effect bands. The ground, of course, is pretty warm, and even though this is coming at night, you're still gonna need some pretty decent snow rates for this to stick, especially on those paved surfaces. But I think that, you know, we have a chance of getting up to an inch. We've got, you know, maybe a 30, 40% chance or so of getting up to an inch, inch and a half worth of snow from Johnston and Mecca over towards Kinsman, Greenville, Sandy Lake area, the I-79 corridor in northwestern Mercer County. Once you get south of this area, and especially again south of Interstate 80, it's not much more than a couple of flurries tonight. And again, I'm not real concerned about a rapid freeze up and black ice and that sort of thing. It hasn't rained now for several hours. We had a lot of wind to help dry the pavement out this afternoon. But we are heading into some pretty cold territory overnight. We'll be in the 20s for much of the night with wind chills by tomorrow morning in the single digits, lower teens. Gonna feel like winter on this final day of meteorological winter on Thursday. But the afternoon, even though it's gonna be brisk and it's gonna be cold, that, that wind will sting. Uh, the te the uh, sky, I should say, will look a lot better than today with a good deal of sun for a Thursday afternoon. We're gonna stay quiet for Thursday afternoon, Thursday night and the daylight hours on Friday. Now we have upped our rain chances in our forecast for Friday night. Do think there'll be a scattering of light showers that push through and one or two of these could still be around first thing Saturday morning. But by Saturday afternoon, I think we're just mostly cloudy and uneventful. Things are uh, looking pretty quiet for the weekend. And you know, if you've been following forecasts, it's gonna turn much warmer by the end of the weekend and the first part of next week. Let's talk about the extended forecasts here. and. Uh, We'll show you uh, today's run of what we call the European weeklies or the European extended. Um, this suite of modeling run every day now. It used to be run twice a week. Now it's run every day. Goes out 46 days. 
Now, like any other suite of modeling, you have to take this with a big grain of salt as you go into the longer range. It hasn't been especially skillful in the longer range this uh, winter season, but it's singing the same tune as it has been for a long time now, and a lot of the other modeling singing from you know, the same hymnal, if you will, that by the second half of March, we're going to see a pattern change. Now, we're, I think we're going to be warmer than the average for much of the next two weeks or so. Um, but as we go to the second half of March, we're going to fast forward here. These are uh, kind of seven-day chunks of temperature anomalies, and we'll fast forward to between the 20th and 27th, so right around the equinox, right as we go into astronomical spring. A lot more blue on the map. We have reason to be skeptical of this. Um, we're not going to take this to the bank, but there's at least a decent chance at this point that the pattern becomes less warm. Will it be cold per se? Eh, the jury is still out on that. Less warm? I think that's fairly likely at this point. And that probably sticks around for a time into later March and maybe even into April. In fact, tomorrow evening on Weather for Weather Geeks and on my weather blog, uh, we'll talk about the spring forecast. We'll review the winter forecast um, since meteorological winter ends tomorrow. Uh, we'll look at the final numbers and talk about how the forecast did. It started okay, didn't end so great. Um, and we'll also do the spring forecast. And just a little hint of what I'll be talking about tomorrow evening. Here's a look at our top analogs for the spring season, March, April, and May. On this list, 1952, 54, 66, 69, 73, 2010, 2007. And you, know, you don't see a lot of warm anomalies on this, on this uh, map. I do think that overall our spring will likely not go into the record books as particularly warm and certainly not as warm compared to the average as the winter season. In fact, the most consistently warm weather over the winter season compared to average, maybe in the first half of March. The rest of the spring season, again, compared to the average, maybe not as consistently mild. In fact, we could have some pretty chilly stretches and maybe even a later than average frost and freeze this year. Those are all things we'll be talking about in uh, our spring forecast coming up on Thursday evening. Hope you'll tune in then. Check us out on YouTube and all my social media outlets and on 21 News at 6 and 11. Make sure you have the Storm Tracker 21 app downloaded and ready to roll as we head into the spring season. I'll see you back here on Thursday.